During my lifetime, there have been great changes in uh, the field in which I work. Uh, in my er when I was a young man, the field was usually called the history of science. Uh, and it existed in academic departments in universities in the United States and in Europe. Uh, George Sarton, who was originally from Belgium and then moved to Harvard University uh, in the United States, is considered, at least in the United States, the founder of the field of the history of science. And the first program in the history of science in the United States was created at Harvard University shortly after World War II. That developed and became a bigger and bigger field. And then about 20 years ago, another change occurred, and that is a, a slightly new field, it's closely connected to the history of science, but it's not the same, developed, and that's called STS, or Science, Technology, and Society. And people in this field were not as much interested in describing the old history of science from, say, Galileo to Newton uh, to uh, Darwin, as they were in discussing the interaction between science and technology and society today. So it's a more contemporary study. So people in this field look at things like I've just been describing. What, in what areas of the world has, have science and technology most successfully developed and why? Why does it develop more rapidly in some places than other places? And furthermore, what are the impacts of science and technology on society. We all know that there's a field now called biomedical ethics. That's a part of science, technology, and society. Once we have these new technologies that allow us to keep people alive, even when they would normally be dying, uh, almost forever, then very serious questions, ethical questions, arise about how long should you keep a very old person hooked up to machines that keep them alive even though they don't have any capability of enjoying life around them. Do you pull the plug and let them die? Or do you just keep them alive even though they're more or less a plant, not a human being, because they uh, don't see and things and don't talk to people around them? Is it okay to pull the plug then? You could call that murder if you wanted to. On the other hand, what if you could keep this person alive almost indefinitely? Should you, even though this is a vegetable and not a human being? Uh, it, these are very serious questions. So these people in the field of science, technology, and society study those kinds of questions too. And they also study questions such as, what is the impact of computers on society? What is the impact of all these games that our children are now playing? Does that change the way they are growing up, the way they should be educated, the way they think, the way they relate to the outer world? Uh, I have a colleague uh, at MIT who spends a great deal of time, uh, her name is Sherry Turkle, uh, discussing those kinds of issues. So the new field of STS is, is connected to the old history of science, and there are still plenty of just traditional historians of science, but these new people in STS are more interested in today than they are in centuries ago. They're more interested in how science and technology interact with society. How does it change us? Are we different people now because we all use computers and cell phones? And uh, does that make us different? If we spend all our time in front of a computer are we cutting out other things that we should be done, doing? Are books disappearing? Uh, all those kinds of things get discussed uh, in these new STS programs. Both the history of science and these new STS studies that I just described are newcomers to academia. So there's been a lot of discussion about, well, where do you put them? Are historians of science, should they be in history departments? And STS programs, well, sometimes they're historians, sometimes they're sociologists, sometimes they're e uh, economists. Should they be put in the sociology department, the history department, the economics department, or should they be in their own separate 
program, the tendency has been in recent years to put them in their own separate programs called STS programs. At MIT, which is a very uh, influential engineering school, uh, made the decision to create a, a special department called Science, Technology, and Society program. That's the program I'm in. And uh, we now pursue this kind of thing. And we have people who are studying not only the topics I've already mentioned, like uh, biomedical ethics and the impact of computers, that sort of thing. But we also have people who are studying such things as, is technology both harming and helping us? Uh, it obviously helps us in some ways, but at the same time, is it destroying some old values that are, should be retained? Are we becoming more like robots than we are thinking human beings? Have we lost some human qualities because we are so engaged with technology? This is a very deep and difficult subject, and we have people studying that kind of thing. There are some people who are very comfortable with these STS studies and think that they should be continued. It should be said that there are some people who criticize them also. And sometimes the criticism comes from science departments and engineering departments because they want to be free to do whatever they want and they don't like these people over there, not all of them, but sometimes they don't like these people over there in STS programs who are saying, you know, you scientists and engineers, you don't have everything right. I mean, <laughs> you should do some things a little differently. You should listen to us. And they sometimes say, well, why should we listen to you? Uh, we're scientists and engineers, you are not. Actually, I have a degree in engineering, but nonetheless, you're, you're, you're not scientists and engineers, and therefore they're a little critical of us. But as time has gone on, I think we have convinced them, or we are convincing them, that we're doing something valuable. So MIT now, even though we, the program went through some difficult days because of that kind of criticism, the, the program now is growing. And I think that will happen in universities all over the world. In other words, I think that the future of STS studies is very bright. It will no doubt change. I can't predict the future. It's difficult for me to say. It depends on other things. If we have some terrible technological disaster, if we have a nuclear power plant that blows up and is even worse than Chernobyl or something like that, I don't think that will happen. But if it did happen, you could be sure that there'd be a revolt against technology in society. These programs would be in the middle of it and there would be great controversy. If that kind of disaster doesn't happen, and I hope it won't, uh, then I think the, the field will be more tame, you might call. That is to say, there'll be lots of issues to study, very controversial ones having doing with bioengineering. We're getting so powerful now in our molecular biology that we can create new organisms, we can create maybe even new species, or we can rescue species of the past. We're already talking about, would it be possible to bring mammoths, elephants back to life? Well, what if someone said, here we've got the DNA of uh, Cro-Magnon man, of a Neanderthal. Should we bring that person back to life? That's a pretty deep problem because you're, you don't know what kind of a person that might be. You don't know what the ethical rules should be. Should you treat that person who lived 5,000, 10,000 years ago, maybe 20,000 years ago? Do you treat that as a fellow human being or do you treat that as something between an animal and a human being? Those are very difficult problems. All that will get discussed. So I think that the more that science and technology develop, the more problems, or at least issues, of these kinds will be raised. And you will need to have intelligent people in SDS programs 
discussing this, bringing the issues out to the public so that you can have a public discussion. And that's what STS programs do, and I think that's what they will do more and more in the future.